Hello, Keith here and welcome to the June 2023 update on our battery and solar installation. It's been a little bit later than I had planned. Um, firstly, I had to wait for Octopus Energy to apply the export credit to my account so I could actually see what would be paid for our export. Plus, a minor family emergency put a stop to any preparation plans for this video. But as you can see from the thumbnail, our energy costs for June are effectively zero as the credit to the account also paid for our gas usage. But anyway, on with the review and let's take a look at what happened. As always, a reminder of our installation. So we have 16 Trina 385 watt solar panels, of which nine of those are on the west facing roof and seven panels are on the east facing roof. So we have a total installed solar capacity of 6.16 kilowatts. And we also have five pylon batteries, giving us a total storage capacity of 12 kilowatts. And that's all managed through a Solis 5G inverter. So as we run through the representation of the solar day over the course of the year, let's take a look at the results for June 2023 and the continued savings that we've made this month. So midway through the month on June 15th, based on the data from timeanddate.com, the sun is rising in the direction of the northeast at 4.39 in the morning and it's set at quarter past nine at night in the direction of the northwest. There is a total of 16 hours and 36 minutes of daylight on this date. And the 15th of June has 59 minutes more daylight compared to the 15th of May. And at the middle of the day, the sun is at 62 degrees above the horizon which is five degrees higher than the same date in May. And obviously we're probably, what, six days before the longest day of the year. Weather-wise, uh, we've seen some rain, uh, but it's still significantly lower than the average for the time of year. Our Netatmo weather station measured 24 millimeters of rain, which is around 55% of the average monthly rainfall for June, according to our local Met Office weather station. However, the easterly weather pattern that kept bringing the cloud in from the coast has finally eased, meaning that we have had many fine days, and that is reflected in our generation statistics. So in June, uh, we saw over 900 kilowatt hours of generation, which is our highest generation figure to date. And overall, we averaged 31 kilowatt hours of generation per day, and on 13 days, we generated at least 35 kilowatt hours. For the month in total, uh, we saw 937 kilowatt hours of solar generation. Our worst day was the 28th of June, but we still generated 14.4 kilowatt hours that day. And our best day was the 4th of June, where we generated just shy of 40 kilowatt hours with 39.8 kilowatt hours. And if we look at the 4th of June on the Solis Cloud dashboard, you can see that it was a pretty clear sky all day as there are no big dropouts uh, due to cloud. Uh, of the 39.8 kilowatt hours that were generated, we used 14.7 kilowatt hours directly from the panels, sent 7.7 .7 kilowatt hours to the batteries, and exported 17.5 kilowatt hours back to the grid. And with regards to the batteries, uh, we also had some storage still left over from the previous day, uh, and we used 10.9 kilowatt hours in total from the batteries. And in terms of peak generation, in terms of kilowatt hours, we saw a maximum of 6.5 kilowatt hours at peak generation on the 6th of June, and a minimum of 3 kilowatt hours of peak generation on the 28th of June. Typically, on a daily basis, our peak generation was between 3 and 6.5 kilowatt hours, and for the month, we averaged 4.8 kilowatt hours. And here is our electricity usage split between grid import battery usage, solar usage and grid export. The 11th of June was the best day we've actually ever seen in terms of split between solar generated usage and grid import, with 100% of our energy usage being directly from the panels and batteries. On that day we only imported 9 watts from the grid, but we generated 34.9 kilowatt hours, used 9.4 kilowatt hours and exported 20 kilowatt hours. Over the month in total, we exported 385 kilowatt hours and we averaged around 12.8 kilowatt hours per day. And on seven days, we did actually export over 20 kilowatt hours, with our best being 21.4 kilowatt hours on the 10th of June. And here is the split between solar generation usage in terms of panels and battery against grid import for the month. 
as you can see, we had 26 days in June where 95% or more of our electricity came from solar generation. And as previously mentioned, one day was actually 100%. For the month in total, 97% of our electricity usage was from the solar panels and batteries, with only 3% imported from the grid. And this is how our import cost per day looks. The blue being our standing charge, currently set at 42 pence per day, while the orange is the grid import cost, which is currently set at 34 pence per kilowatt hour. Our average import cost per day is 24 pence. Uh, that goes up to 67 pence if you factor in the standing charge. So, how did we do in June 23? As we saw, 97% of our electricity consumption in June was through solar generation, either directly from the panels or directly from the batteries. We generated in total 938 kilowatt hours of electricity, of which we used 314 kilowatt hours directly, exported 257 kilowatt hours, and sent 238 kilowatt hours to the battery. Our grid import cost for June was 20 pounds and 18 pence, and that was for 39 kilowatt hours. We were also paid for our export for the month, and that was 37 pounds and 45 pence which actually reduced our electricity bill to a negative figure of negative 17 pounds and 27 pence. So that meant because we then had a credit, we pretty much covered our gas bill for the month too. Our generated usage would have cost us an additional 209 pounds and 39 pence. So our total cost, if we hadn't had the solar generation and battery storage in place, would have been in the region of 229 pounds and 57 pence based on our total house usage. So this month has continued to increase our generation and export values and ultimately our savings. Uh, we have generated an additional 111 kilowatt hours more than we did in May, which was a 13% increase, but we did send less to our batteries compared to last month. We have though saved 13 pounds more than last month in terms of bills, and we saw an increase of 3% on our overall solar utilisation. In total, for the year to date, we've generated three megawatt hours, of which we've used two and a half megawatt hours and exported 852 kilowatt hours. And our grid import total is still at 1.4 megawatt hours, which is half of our grid import for the same period last year. So that was our June overview uh, for July as we slide into the second half of the year and the days start to get shorter again. It will be interesting to see just how slowly the performance drops as we go through to the end of summer. And given this video is so late, uh, the next one won't be as long to wait for. I also thought it might be worth doing a comparison on our battery storage and utilisation, comparing good days of solar utilisation to the bad and how on some days we end up without any usable batteries left which is usually when the weather hasn't been as great. So let me know if that will be of interest below and I'll have a look at the data to see what I can pull from it. As always, let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you'd like to see. And if you found this video useful, please do like and subscribe and I'll see you all for the next one.